Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim and uh, tonight we have Ted Aranda on 9-11. We're, we're sorry for the delay in getting started due to some technical problems and issues. I'd like to introduce tonight's moderator, Don Ritchie, and uh, Don's going to take all over from here. May I have your attention, please? All right. Hey. All right. All right. May I have your attention, please? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, like I said, uh, this right, is uh, this is the College of Complexes, and my name's Don, and I'm the going to be the moderator this evening. Uh, tonight, our program is 9-11 and Revolution, the Political Implications. Uh, in this presentation, historian Ted Aranda lays out the facts of the 9-11 events, as well as the incidents, wider political implications. Uh, Ted, he asks, on September 11, 2001, the U.S. government murdered 3,000 perfectly innocent Americans in cold blood. Um, excuse me. Um, uh, the U.S. government murdered 3,000 perfectly innocent Americans in cold blood and then diabolically proceeded to use this disguised homicidal act as the pretext to wage endless, utterly unjustified war and to construct an Orwellian police surveillance military state. What are you going to do about it? Well, now I've just, I've just summed up the whole presentation, so I guess y'all can go home now. If there are no more announcements, then let's, uh, let's have a warm round of applause for our... What? Let's have a warm round of applause for our speaker this evening, Ted Aranda. Ted, come on down. I just want to uh, thank a few people. Uh, Bob Moore, where's Bob? Okay, he moved. Uh, that's my colleague at uh, Democracy for the USA, uh, and he's helped me uh, in this project uh, to some degree. Uh, my sister Doris, um, she's not here, she's living in California. Uh, Kurt Golden, her uh, fiance, they were helpful to me. And uh, Andy Anderson, where's Andy now? Over here. Okay. Andy was the first one to recommend or to uh, get me in interested in this subject. I didn't know anything about 9/11. Okay, before I uh, got into started uh, falling into the rabbit hole, as that guy said in that first video. Uh, let me see, Alice, Alice in Wonderland, you know. Okay, and I don't. I would be amiss if I didn't thank all the other uh, brilliant investigators. I'm not even at that level yet. I, in, to, I'm, I'm new to this. So they're, they're those, uh, the investigators, the people whose books I read, whose, the videos that I saw, they're brilliant. They're honest and they're diligent. Okay. So without further ado, I'm not going to give a speech today at all because I have uh, a whole lot of uh, photographic uh, material. <clears throat> this uh, was um, a Mythbusters uh, experiment that they did, not with the same old guys. You know, the, 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 do you guys know Mythbusters? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But these are not the regular guys. I think this was either a spinoff or just some new hosts. That's a, uh, they call, they're calling that a rocket sled. Those are the rockets right there that they're loading into this thing. This thing is made of steel. That's a cage. But that's not what they're testing. They're testing this blade. Uh, they, you can, they call it a, 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 a blade, they call it a, a, a um, it's a solid piece of a steel, okay? And uh, they, they loaded, they made, constructed this thing. Sorry. And, I, uh, yeah, I, I kind of wish this thing moved faster, but, this, you know, the, the, these, these uh, things don't move quite as fast as I want sometimes, but we're going to have to be patient. Um, so that's it right there. I'm giving you a good view. That's a little higher and a little higher. And they're in the desert, obviously. And that's just giving you another view of the size of this thing and the size of that blade. Okay. And what they're doing is they're going to run that blade. And I'm sorry if I don't um, look up and recognize you guys that much because I have to know what's going on here. <clears throat> they're going to run that blade into that car at 500 uh, to 550 miles an hour. One announcer, one of these people that are doing the thing, said 500. The other said 550 miles an hour. But you get the point. It's extremely fast. And they're going to uh, run that blade into this car. And they're going to find out what happens. You got it. Excuse me? Okay. So that's the setup right there. Uh, those rockets there, okay, are going to uh, uh, turn on in a second. And you're going to see what's going to happen.
that now it's taken off, it's coming. And I went frame by frame, or a few frames at a time, so that you could see exactly what's happening. Okay, uh, the bottom line is that um, this uh, blade, okay, cut this car clean in half and was not damaged. Uh, so that's one half of the car. Literally down the tape line, they had a, t a piece of tape on the roof of the car, the roof and the hood and, and, and the trunk. And see the, see the tape there? Okay, literally ha uh, blew that car uh, off that thing and, 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 and uh, cut it in half. That's the, what's left of the uh, cage uh, of the blade. The blade actually hit um, uh, the concrete barrier yes. right there, okay, which is a huge concrete barrier. James? And uh, and either uh, 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 were shattered, I suppose. Okay, but after that was after it went clean through this car. Thanks. Now, is anybody wondering why I'm even telling you guys about this? Yes. Okay. I, I guess I should uh, give you a, a little explanation there. That blade uh, is about the strength of the uh, or roughly uh, the kind of material that the World Trade Center uh, was constructed out of. Um, the World Trade Center uh, was pretty much a mountain of steel, okay? Uh, those things were not made to be uh, weak. They were made to be extremely strong. Vehicles are much more delicate objects in general. Cars, planes, okay, are much weaker objects. When, when two uh, objects hit each other, uh, whether, I wonder if this thing is moving. There we go, okay. I'm trying to get it going as fast as possible. I might like it to go a little faster so we don't have to spend that much time on it. But see that, uh, see that uh, uh, thing there? Okay, it's gonna, it goes through the car and then hits that thing. Okay. There. You can see that it's, um, it's perfectly intact. The blade is perfectly intact and after it goes through the car. It wasn't damaged, pretty much. It only, um, it only uh, is uh, uh, cut when it hits that um, concrete barrier, and that, that makes sense because even though the steel is hard, it's not as large and massive as that concrete barrier. So let's uh, try to get through this as fast as possible because I think you guys get the idea. Um, when two objects run into each other, here, now here are two more objects. That's a, a concrete uh, 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 block with a, with a plate of steel on it. And that, they're gonna get this uh, Ford Focus going at um, 120 miles an hour. Okay. This is the uh, fastest uh, crash test ever. As far as, you know, as far as uh, that's what these promoters are telling us. When two objects hit each other, it doesn't matter uh, which is moving um, and which is standing still on the ground. In space, we're all moving in space. Uh, um, motion is relative. So they could have had this barrier running at the car. They could have had that car sitting there and the barrier uh, moving, and the effect would have been exactly the same. That's Newton's third law of motion. Now this is uh, slowing down, and you're gonna see um, that, that that barrier right there doesn't move, right? Uh, well, let me keep on going. You'll see that that barrier does not move. It, not only does the car not go through the barrier, it doesn't even move, as far as I can tell, one millimeter. We're gonna see this in even slower motion in a second here. And this car hits that barrier and literally bounces off. That car is not going through that barrier. Now, you know, okay, we'll see it a little faster. Or oh, actually, this is slow motion. And here you'll see the impact. And tell me if anybody can see that red line. That that uh, that that's the side of the of the steel plate, which is probably two inches. Okay, the World Trade Center was constructed out of this kind of material and about that thickness too. Okay, the um, the what do we call them? The uh, um, core columns of the, the World Trade Center were approximately that thick, about four, uh, about four, uh, from the mic to my hand. Uh, I probably I'm not, that's probably not even four uh, four feet. Okay, four feet is like about here. Okay, and that is roughly four or five feet or whatever. That is the kind of material. 
uh, the core columns, and, and, and especially in the, in the bottom, because the um, World Trade Center tapered. The, the, the uh, steel beams um, were thicker at uh, the bottom and thinner, uh, a little bit thinner at the top, but I mean, they're still strong. I mean, they're still massive steel things. But at the bottom, that's for sure, uh, that tower is not going anywhere, okay? It would take something a lot more than some stupid plane to knock that tower down. So anyway, I'm trying to get through this uh, fast. And that, that car, uh, as you see, uh, bounces right back, and it shatters, and all the pieces um, uh, bounce back. Now, uh, as we'll see in a, in a, in a second here, uh, airplanes are actually even less sturdy than cars. Did anybody see uh, in the videos? In the videos, I'm going to go back for just one frame. Did, it, did anybody see in any of those videos uh, of, the, of the World Trainer, uh, World Trade Center uh, collisions, quote unquote uh, collisions with planes? Did anybody ever see uh, one of those planes bounce off uh, one of the World Trade Towers? One of the, uh, you saw a, a plane bounce off? Okay, no, no. Did anybody raise their hand if you saw? In, in, there was there were about like thirty of those videos made. Did anybody ever see a collision? Not not the plane going gliding into the into the uh, 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 tower, but actually having a collision of some sort, some kind of uh, shattering, some kind of piece breaking off. Uh, smashing? No, right? There were frigging 30 or so of those videos made, okay, supposedly showing us exactly what happened, and they violate the most basic laws of physics, okay? It is pure, utter nonsense. They might as well tell you that an Easter bunny hit the World Trade Center uh, and went through the World Trade Center. Okay, all the concrete and all the steel. <clears throat> That's what happened to that car. And a car is much more compact than a plane. because of pl Now, I brought this up because I was looking at, at all this stuff, and I was trying to find out what happens when, t when a, a vehicle hits a barrier. Okay, a wall is a barrier, you know, uh, any wall. But some barriers are, uh, you know, strong, and some are not so strong, right? Uh, that wall, a uh, brick wall, probably an old building or whatever, falling apart or whatever, a little car went right through it. Now, why is that? Okay, even though the brick is hard, it depends on how it's made. The individual bricks are held by mortar, right? Um, that's a force. The the the, the plane, the, the a vehicle is not a very solid object. It's not solid steel. They don't make vehicles solid because you have, they have to move. They're made for speed, not for not for strength. Uh, but any object of of, of, of the weight of a, of a, of a, uh, a car. Has, when it hits a barrier, it has, it has a certain, uh, of, it, it imparts force because it has mass and, and it ha it's large and has mass. And the speed also uh, 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 strengthens, strengthens, gives it more force when it hits something. So you have to factor in the speed as well. And cars and planes are moving fast. But still, you can, uh, physicists can figure out what the effect is going to be. That's what they're paid for. That's what they study. That's what they know about. Okay? So when physicists tell you that this kind of object hitting another kind of object is going to have this kind of effect, broadly speaking, okay, you have to listen to those physicists. They know what the hell they're talking about. So, so in, in some cases, you know, you can hear, but but okay, these um, solidly constructed things are made to withstand force and made to withstand impacts from other objects like the World Trade Center. It was designed to be able to withstand airplanes hitting it. Okay, they're not going anywhere. Those are two bollards, they're called. They're, they're the kind of security barriers that you put in front of a uh, building. Watch what happens when this vehicle hits those bollards. This is um, a truck. <clears throat> going 50 miles an hour. It stopped cold. The cab falls off, but only because the bar those barriers, those bollards were, uh, were short. The rest of the truck stops cold. That truck is not even getting over those little, I mean, they're relatively small in size, but they're sturdy. They're made for strength. Those are concrete and steel uh, um, objects there. This is a plane. Finally, we're getting to planes, right? You guys are probably wondering when, when we're ever going to get to planes. 
But the concept is the same. Vehicles striking solid objects. Vehicles are made light. They're, they're weight, lightweight material. They're mostly empty because they have to hold a lot of occupants. They have to save uh, energy. They have to save gas or, or whatever fuel they use. This, um, this airplane, this was a test crash. That's not a, that's not a, there's nobody in that plane. Hit those, uh, all it hit were a few barriers before those telephone poles, but those are, that's what we're looking at mainly here. Two telephone poles. And then when it hits the ground, of course the whole darn nose of the plane falls off. Here's another, uh, another view. <clears throat> Here go, there, go, there go the telephone poles. And now here, um, one of the telephone poles has already done some damage, and this plane is just about to hit that other telephone pole. Two telephone poles, okay? Uh, each about uh, 13, 12, uh, uh, a, foot, a foot wide. It's the same, it's the same uh, event, just a, a different angle. And for good measure, like I said, if I could move this a little faster, I would, but this is the limits of our technology here. Um, <clears throat> for good measure, there's one more view. Um, now, I'll, I'll back it up. By the way, is, is everybody understanding what I'm saying? Am I, um, is this setup working all right? Can you all see it all right and hear me and everything? Okay. <clears throat> um, see right there. That plane, uh, the plane, the wing is, is, is hitting that uh, telephone pole right now. Watch what happens. That wing sheared right off. That telephone pole knocked that wing right off. And then the other uh, wing, I'm not going to back it up, but it was already impacting and it uh, took, did a number on the rest of the wing. See that, so that's what happened. Two telephone poles did that to that wing. Those are telephone poles. Those are not even steel towers. I mean, steel poles. Those are just telephone poles. These are all homemade. But uh, telephone poles are, of course, old trees, and trees are very sturdy objects too. That's why when cars hit trees, you know who gets the better of it. Uh, usually, you know, a big tree. A car's not going through a big tree. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, there goes that um, that second, the, the closer, the more inner uh, telephone pole. It got about uh, two thirds of the way through that uh, wing there. So two telephone poles did a number on, on this here uh, uh, propeller plane. Now, you know, you might say, well, it wasn't going 500 miles an hour. <laughs> this baby here is going 500 miles an hour. This was a test of a, of a jet, of an of a F4 Phantom jet plane. Yeah, uh, of course, you know, as you can see, um, you know, these tests are usually done in the desert where you're not gonna hurt anybody. <clears throat> and this is this was a while ago. They don't, you know, the F4 was is an old is an old jet. But the test was to see if they could. Uh, it, they were testing the barrier actually. There's a barrier that this uh, plane is going to hit, which is uh, um, supposed to protect it. It's a simulation of protecting a, a nuclear power plant. Okay. Uh, so there's the barrier. Uh, another, uh, you know, solid concrete barrier. And here comes the plane. <clears throat> okay, so right there, there's the impact. Now, how many people <laughs> uh, think or might guess that that plane is going to go through that barrier? Does anybody think that that plane is going to go through that barrier? Watch as the plane hits the barrier. Watch this space here, okay? That'll tell you if anything is going through that barrier. Not only, of course, not only does the plane not go through the barrier, it, uh, it, it hardly moves the barrier. It does move it a little bit because it's designed to move. It's to uh, absorb a little bit of shock. But that plane isn't going anywhere. It was completely destroyed. And you can still see uh, the plane's practically all the way. If it had gone in, it'd be in right now. It would be through the barrier, but it hasn't gone anywhere. It's shattered in front of the barrier. That plane was going 550 miles an hour. That's the speed that we're told that the plane struck the World Trade Center at. 
The only problem is that there were no planes. There were no planes at all. There were no airliners, rather. I should correct myself. There were no airliners hitting barriers, uh, hitting uh, buildings on 9-11. But if they had, they wouldn't have done what uh, these um, criminals told us that they did, or fooled us into thinking that they did. Now, that's the front of a plane. That's how a plane is made, right, uh, or, or built. It's mostly empty, right? Uh, I guess, you know, this is the frame, okay, but you know that's not a steel girder, right? <laughs> That's probably, it's all, it's all cool, uh, aluminum, aluminum composite or alloy or whatever. Look how thin that skin is. It's two millimeters thick. I might as well show you right now because I bought a prop. I brought a prop. This is a, this is a steel plate, okay? I'm going to pass it around so you guys can get a feel for this. Don't drop it on your toe. I'm serious. Uh, this is a three-eighths inch steel plate, solid steel. This is what, um, now the base of the World Trade Center was made from much thicker and bigger pieces of steel. But this is how, uh, this is about the thickness of the, uh, 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 what do you call them, uh, um, uh, columns toward the top of, of the World Trade Center. Because again, it was, it was built like the Eiffel Tower. If you imagine, kind of imagine the steel, that, that's the steel inside the World Trade Center was thicker at the bottom, even though it looks like all the same, uh, it was thicker at the bottom and, and thinner at the top. Uh, let me start from this side, if anybody wants to. And like I said, be careful, you break, break something in here if you, if you drop that. I'm serious. All right. Um, now, see that? that that's, the nose, that's the nose of a plane, I, right there. It is, literally, it is literally hollow because they have to have communications equipment in there. They, have to, they go through the nose. So if the nose was made even of aluminum, uh, it, it's, it would, be, it would uh, prevent the communication, I suppose, the, the signal. So it's made of carbon fiber. And that was, a, that was a bird damage right there. That's another bird damage. Birds, okay. I'm talking birds. That's, another, that's more bird damage. And that's a bird sitting there, hanging there, after it uh, had the misfortune of coming into contact with that wing of this moving plane. And look what that bird did to that wing. I think birds are me measured in weight, in ounces, not pounds. Now, again, See, I was looking through this thing, and I'm trying to be objective. I'm thinking, okay, well, plane, and by now I'm thinking, a plane's not going to go through a wall, right? It depends on what kind of wall, how it's built, how it's structured, you know? Is, is, does it have a steel uh, uh, mesh? Is it uh, uh, reinforced? Is it, uh, how thick is it? Uh, how, these are brick walls. Remember the brick wall uh, with the car? Brick walls are not very strong. Thanks. Is it, did everybody get a chance to, if they wanted to? I'd like you guys to get a feel because we're talking physics, we're talking about weight and strength, okay? We're not talking uh, video, freaking videos, okay? Um, which you, you can make anything look like anything on, on a video, and that's what they did. So uh, some planes, uh, you know, a plane could, can possibly go through a wall, but not just any wall. That's a, a measly little brick wall. Here's what happened when a plane uh, in uh, Kenya hit that building behind us there. Uh, I'm just curious what he was saying, but anyway, um, so that's that's one plane. I'll show you a few. Um, that's the same plane uh, in Kenya. Um, now you'll notice that um, as opposed to, let's say, Shankville, which I'll show you in a while because it's way toward the end of this list, this set of of, uh, of, of uh, photographs. You can see that plane, right? There's a plane there, right? Everybody, does anybody not see a plane there? Does anybody here not see a plane there? That's the plane that crashed into a field. You wait till you see close up what people saw at Shankville, okay? If, if anybody hasn't seen, has anybody not seen uh, the Shankville crash or does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Maybe I should explain. Uh, excuse me? Let me explain. Okay. Um, there were four airplanes, um, hold on. Let me, let me uh, reconstruct what, I, what uh, you know, we think probably happened. The rational people. I'm talking about these idiots and criminals that, that tell you um, this or that. <clears throat> what probably happened was that there were four planes that took off from airports on 9-11, and they got up in the sky. And when I show you the flight path, um, you're going to wonder, you know, why they're going that way. You know, New York is that way. 
but these hijackers going that way. Okay, what they were doing was they uh, landed on probably an Air Force bases or ordinary little airstrips, so unloaded their plane, their passengers, and the planes kept on going. Uh, and the theory right now is that they landed in Cleveland. Uh, because, and I'll explain, uh, well, I might as well tell you now, I might not even get to it. <clears throat> there was an emergency landing um, of, a, of a plane, or a couple planes actually, in Cleveland on 9-11. And the airport was evacuated. And it was, there was a quarter, supposedly a bomb on board. And people saw a couple hundred people uh, get off these couple planes. And, and they were taken to the uh, NASA facility and another official government uh, facility. And that's all anybody knows. But it was very mysterious. And there are, there's other evidence. I don't know all the details. You don't have to know all the details. This is another thing that you, people have to understand. You don't have to know how many millimeters that steel plate is. You know, it is a thick steel plate. We're not talking about uh, details here. We're talking about you know basic things that you know uh, that happen or don't happen. I'm sorry to delay. We should be moving on here. Okay. So um, there go your your boings. That I, I should back this up. They go Boeings, okay, when they hit, I don't know what the heck this Boeing here, uh, this plane is here, but, you know, that, that is not, that's a real plane hitting a real object, right? And that's what the, okay, that's not even a building, obviously. <clears throat> okay, so there's the World Trade Center. Is, is this the first image of the World Trade Center we, we've gotten to? This was quite, of a, quite an introduction. Um, so there go uh, the um, outer uh, uh, walls, okay, which were made of steel columns. Now, <clears throat> these people that uh, hatched this plan to run planes into the, um, into, uh, supposedly, uh, run planes into the World Trade Center, picked the worst building in the world to carry uh, out this deception, uh, okay, attempted deception. Because the uh, World Trade Center, uh, uh, unlike what they told us on the day of or the day after, the few weeks, a uh, few days after, I actually heard, and this is one of the reasons that I never even got interested in 9/11. I heard the official, uh, these these talking heads on on on, on TV, on the news, ex or in documentaries, whatever, explaining how the World Trade Center was like a hollow, uh, you know, flimsy uh, building. And that's why they collapsed. That's why the, the, the forest pancaked. And I'm Mickey Mouse, OK? Um, I mean, it was just, it was just a, a, a fabrication out of whole cloth. This building was exceptionally strong. One of the architects or engineers or whatever said, they don't make it like this anymore. <clears throat> Those are gigantic uh, steel uh, columns in there. I mean, gigantic. And I'll show you in a little bit. <clears throat> That, the, 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 the big, and that's the um, facade uh, to give you, I mean, that was, obviously, that was, inside there was during construction, and they superimposed a, a view afterward to give you an idea of what the building was like. So inside the, the World Trade Center is this, uh, these uh, uh, core columns, which are extremely strong and very large. <clears throat> well, a closer view. Now, these are men here, okay? Those aren't midgets, those are ordinary uh, sized workers. And these are the core columns, which are feet. They, we're not talking uh, steel measured in feet, uh, inches. We're talking about steel measured in feet, in thickness and width, okay? Now, these are, those are the core columns. These are the walls. And, um, oh, that's what the walls are made of, okay? Um, the structure. And those are, those there are called spandrels. They're the horizontal things that hold the walls. Oh, excuse me, that hold the, uh, the, the floors. Okay, um, these spandrels, uh, that's the, the, this uh, length right here, or rather height, that's the height of one floor. This is another floor, okay? And the, 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 these walls, the outer walls, uh, are connected to the uh, core columns by these, uh, uh, those are the floors, and those are very strong too. They're not as, uh, quite as thick as the other uh, uh, things, but uh, as the, they're not as thick as the uh, vertical columns, but they're made of um, a mesh of steel, a truss, a truss of steel, okay? And concrete and, st and more steel. Four inch concrete is, is what they laid on, on the floor. And that's one of the floors being lifted up. You ready? And that's, I think, uh, I believe that's a steel girder running through the middle of the floor. Okay, so those floors aren't exactly flimsy either. 
So uh, that's uh, I told you this already. Now at the bottom, at the base of the these are the, this is the size of those core columns at the base of the uh, World Trade Center. Not only are they five, uh, four feet by uh, about two feet, they also are filled uh, uh, solid with another huge steel uh, uh, steel um, plate in there, and and I believe they probably reinforce the concrete. But anyway, they're practically solid steel. This thing is practically solid steel. Four feet by, uh, yeah, four feet by two feet. <clears throat> there go the spandrels again. Uh, well, uh, those are the spandrels. Those are the uh, outer columns, and that's the floor. They, they have, I uh, don't, yeah, they don't look like they've laid the concrete on, uh, on the, on the, uh, in the floor yet, or on the floor. <clears throat> and that's the size of a man next to one of them. I mean, um, uh, you know, uh, to give you an idea. <clears throat> and those are the outer columns. Those are the outer columns, the small outer columns. Those skinny looking columns from a distance, that's what a man looks like uh, beside those. And we're not even talking about the inner, inner, inner core columns. And there go these guys, these guys down here. That give you a, a, an idea of the size of these steel, not balsa wood, not paper mache, not aluminum, not thin aluminum, steel walls. Now, this um, plane, this super duper plane, was supposed to have gone through all of that steel. The, the floors, the concrete on the floors, the uh, vertical columns, the horizontal spandrels, and not just like one or two. Or, I'm not talking, you know, a whole bunch of that outer wall. And, and then after it gets through, through this wall, outer wall, that is practically solid steel, it's supposed to have gone and damaged the inner uh, columns, which, like I said, are, are, are like humongous. It was supposed to, can you believe they, they said that these aluminum planes, after they got through these outer steel walls, severed, the, severed, that's, what, that's the language they use in the official report, severed the, the, the uh, inner core columns. Like I said, you know, they might as well have told us that uh, Santa Claus, uh, you know, comes down chimneys. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. They made it up just out of the, uh, you know, out of, the, out of thin air. <clears throat> um, well, uh, I wanna, I'm going to come back to, the, to the, that, that thing, but Remember the, uh, does, it, does anybody remember, or I don't, I'm not sure how much you all know about this, or the, this material, how, how new some of this stuff is. Do you know the, the famous uh, photograph of the woman standing in the hole? Does they, or, can you all have see a show of hands? Do, do, do you, you all, are you all familiar uh, uh, with that picture of this woman standing in the hole? Okay. There's a woman standing in that hole. Can you see that woman standing in that hole? Does anybody see the woman standing in the hole? No. <laughs> uh, this is a trick question. You can't see that woman standing in the hole because she's too small. The hole is too big. This uh, 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 super duper uh, 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 plane was supposed to have made this humongous hole. And even the, the wings, which are like, are split. you saw what the, the, the telephone did to those wings on that other plane, right? These wings, are, uh, the tips, I'm not talking even you know, toward the fuselage, but the tips of the wings are supposed to have severed steel uh, columns. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention those outer steel columns. The outer ones, not the big ones, are 14 inches square. 14 inches, you know, more than a foot square of solid steel. Well, not, uh, they're, not, they're not solid inside, but the, uh, the, uh, the outer uh, parts of it. Okay, anyway, um, so there's the one. Now you see her, right? Right there. She's standing next to a column. Right there. And I'll go back and show you where she is in this huge column. Yeah, OK. There she, there, wait, wait, wait. I, I see it on the, on the computer screen, but now I have to correlate. Oh, yeah. She's right there. She's about that tall. Yeah, right there. That's her feet. And that's her, uh, her head. That's how humongous this hole is that this aluminum plane was supposed to. And, and, and you know, what made that hole?
by her name, by, by, by the way, her name is Edna Sintron. These people that these killers killed were real people. What they, the tools they used were all fake, but they uh, did real damage to real people. Oh wait, this is a good picture. <clears throat> okay, now do you guys see her? Right there? Yeah. That's a good view. Look at the size of this cavern. That's like friggin' Carlsbad Cavern. In 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 uh, uh, in a steel uh, wall, supposedly made in a steel wall by a plane. That's her right there. She's dead, by the way. Um, okay, uh, this is um, a Mitchell B-25 uh, bomber. That plane, or a, a plane of that model, hit the world. Uh, excuse me, hit the uh, Empire State Building in 1945. Did anybody um, hear the? Um, all the announcers uh, on 9-11 on or shortly after saying, hey, you know what? Something like this happened before. There was a, there was a bomber hitting the Empire State Building. Let's see what happened at, at that, in that uh, you know, instance. Did anybody hear that? Any announcer any, or any talking head or any? No. You heard somebody on, on day or soon after 9-11? Soon after 9-11. It was on NPR. What did they say? What did they say about that? They said it was a matter of it. They, they just brought it up as a historical fact that it's not the first time it happened. Okay, and did they explain what happened? The yes. Word? Okay, let's see what happened. By the way, uh, uh, they certainly didn't uh, in explain anything because, okay, they're not, they can't hide every fact, right? They can't hide every fact that ever happened. But they can, you know, explain it away. They can say, oh, by the way, you know, this happened uh, in 1945, but it doesn't matter. We don't have to investigate it. We don't have to look at the evidence. We don't have to, you know, put it into context. Context is totally lacking. I mean, they don't, those people don't know what the word context means. Those people that talk on TV and, and you know, in newspapers or whatever. Okay, they don't know what the word context means. Now, anyway, that's the Empire State Building, and that's, a, that's far at the top. To, that's far toward the top. This is probably just, um, what is smoke, or what, what is it, you know, uh, vapor coming off of a nearby, uh, nearby building. But the, the, the fire is up toward the top. There's, uh, there's the uh, impact, okay? So, there was serious damage, because that Mitchell bomber, uh, you know, was probably a more major plane. But I want to show you a couple things. First of all, it didn't, uh, it only dented this floor. It certainly didn't destroy that floor. And there, there's part of the plane right there. This was a collision. This was not a, 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 a made up piece of nonsense on a video. This was an actual collision. And you can examine actual events. You can examine actual, you know, real phenomena. You can't imagine, I mean, you can't examine something that just happens on, 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 on a computer-generated image on, on, uh, on a screen. There's um, the part of the wing, or much of the wing, of that B-25. That plane got into, partly into the building, but it certainly uh, didn't get all the way into the building. And there's debris inside part of the plane. Now, did anybody know that firefighters got up to the damage uh, or the impact place on the um, in this in the south building? I think it was. Okay, this guy reported bodies. The uh, firefighter. He didn't report plane parts. That's part of the wheel there to to the lower left. I think. There's. Now this is uh, very important, actually. These people found debris on the street after the plane hit the building and bounced off. At least part of the plane bounced off, right? Nobody, they, the way that, okay, the, the, the few uh, faked or staged pieces of, of supposed debris that they found, quote, supposedly found of, of those uh, planes that hit the towers, first of all, they were just like one or two pieces planted there, obviously. But they were like, they were not in the logical place. They should have been be, uh, uh, at the foot of the tower um, where the plane struck, because uh, the plane should have uh, at least partly uh, uh, been broken up and fallen to the ground. But that's not what you saw, right? right. Nobody found <laughs> not one piece of two planes, OK? That doesn't happen. <clears throat> this guy, Frank DiMartini, is, uh, was one of the um, 
uh, creators, uh, basically, or, or he was, he says the construction manager, uh, he worked at the towers. He knew the towers inside and out. And by the way, it says missing since 9-11. He wasn't, he's not missing, he's dead. <clears throat> he was up in uh, one of the towers, uh, which one was it? Um, the, the, the North Tower. He was up in the North Tower with a crew of his men, uh, or companions, sa uh, saving people, um, or the ones that he, they could reach, you know, getting them out of, out of uh, uh, elevators, uh, uh, broken elevators, uh, res you know, uh, find, rescuing them if they could, whatever. He, they were making their way up the North Tower, him and his crew, doing, you know, really heroic work. He didn't expect, he's a, he knew the towers inside and out. He knew the World Trade Center, how they were made, hey. what it would happen if a plane hit them. He knew that logically there should have been no reason for him to be in danger. Okay? He was, he, if, if, if it wasn't for these uh, plotters of 9 11 who staged this, uh, this event, um, he, he would have known he was not in danger. So that's why he was going about his business saving people. So here are the um, supposed fires that um, these supposed planes um, made, right? Uh, and I'm showing these particular images to you for a reason. There were fires. There were fires up there. But let me show you real fires. There you go. You know, a couple fires. That's uh, the kind of fire that has consumed hundreds of high-rises, steel-framed high-rises over the years. Hundreds of high-rises have been um, uh, hit by fires. Can anybody take a guess, just a wild guess, out of the, I mean, literally, like, let's say, uh, I saw one statistic, 500 in a five-year period, basically 100 a year. How many of those steel towers have come down, collapsed? Zero, zero, according to the video, the three-and-a-half-hour video. Zero. That's exactly right. Fires do not destroy steel frame buildings. That's um, the same. Yeah, that's the same building. Um, and closer up, this was a major fire. Okay, some of these fires raged for many hours. The fires in uh, in uh, in the World Trade Center lasted for an hour and an hour and a half. And guess what? That tower that was so damaged, so badly damaged uh, right there, it was reconstructed, reconstructed. Not only did it go down, it didn't have any serious damage from that fire. So they just repaired the facade and kept the, uh, the, the core steel structure. This one is in, uh, well, I, I can't, on this particular screen, I can't see. Uh, I forget which one, I think, I think that's, let me see the next one and then I'll know. Yeah, that's the tallest building in Chechnya, or was. Actually, it might still be. I'm not, uh, this one, might, I don't know uh, about this one being repaired. It probably was. But anyway, that's another major fly, uh, fire. And um, look at the extent of that damage on that building. That building did not collapse. Now, this is a famous one. Uh, this is the first interstate building in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't remember what year. That fire is raging through three at least uh, floors, apparently right through the entire building. Does that uh, fire look a little more uh, serious and damaging than the World Trade Center fires? There you go. They repaired the facade. The tower, the, the uh, building is still standing. And this is the first Meridian, same thing, still standing. This one is, um, oh yeah, this is a building in Sao Paulo. Look at, the, look at that fire raging. They built the facade, still standing. Okay, so um, this here is the supposed result, what they tell us, the result of was of those relatively uh, minor fires in the World Trade Center. This is what they tell us happened because of those fires in the World Trade Center.
It'll, um, it starts out a little slow, okay? But yeah, there you go. The, uh, the, building, the top of the building is already disintegrating. Now, something to keep in mind is that they tell us the official theory of the, 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 is that the top part of that tower, okay, came down so hard that it smashed the remaining part of the power, tower. Tell anybody tell me, can, can anybody see whether uh, uh, that the bottom part of that tower looks like it's being smashed? It didn't move at all. That top of the tower was being destroyed while it was coming down. It was not only was it being destroyed, it was being turned to dust. It was being dustified, according to uh, Judy Wood, one of the investigators. So it didn't even have, uh, there was no energy. It was being turned to dust, being destroyed. There was no force coming down on the remaining part of the, of the, t of the tower. Oh, by the way, I might as well tell you right now. We'll get, we'll get to it in a second. But that's a, um, that's right there. That's the result of controlled demolition. That's a squib. The building is being destroyed as it comes down from the inside by explosives. <clears throat> and this is uh, now what happens from a gravitational collapse. If you have a, fi a fire in a building and it were to collapse, it would come down. It would just come down, you know, uh, it would fall. This is not, this is, the building is not falling. This building is being torn apart by extremely, ex I mean, extremely uh, powerful explosions. Um, they're still trying to figure out what exactly uh, explosive, what kind of en explosives, and what kind of energy they used, because this is extraordinary. That's one theory. Now there are there are theories. Okay, we don't know everything. We can see that this building was blown to smithereens. We don't necessarily know exactly how, but we can we can investigate it scientifically. Oh yeah, there's there's a good shot right there. Look at that um, this piece right here. That um, that thing is has been blown. It's probably a steel girder. It's been blown like well, already, you know, 100, 200 feet laterally, not down laterally. And then some of, and then some of these, of course, uh, uh, materials are being blown upward. How would that happen without explosives? Can anybody explain to me how a building that's just collapsing, you know, or it was damaged in fire, so it's supposed to be coming down, right? Can anybody explain to me how uh, uh, some of the material is blasted upward? By, by a gravitational collapse? This blo uh, building was rigged with explosives, extremely um, powerful explosives, and blown to smithereens. That's the North Tower, by the way. That's the South Tower there. And this is another thing that uh, any um, self-respecting uh, physicist or scientist can understand um, could not happen the way they explain. Hold on a second. Okay, so if this building was uh, coming down just because of a fire, um, it would have been coming down, uh, the top part of it there, that it is tilting, you can see it tilting very badly, would have just come down. It would have just tipped over, fallen down into the street or onto another building, right? If it was just coming down from gravitational collapse. But no, it didn't come down, uh, you know, fall uh, to the side. It too was uh, destroyed as it was coming down, turned to dust. <clears throat> this is another one of our true heroes, Frank DiMartini. No, excuse me. That was the other guy. This is uh, Oreo Palmer. He was in the um, South Tower, yeah, um, with his crew going up and saving people and doing what he was paid to do, what he's good at, a first responder, a fireman, okay? He was uh, obviously killed, well, not obviously, I'm telling you, he was killed in the South Tower when the criminals um, blew it up. Um, okay, this is building uh, seven here, right there. It was the third tallest building in the complex, the only other real high rise in the complex. The, uh, there was a complex of seven buildings, uh, World Trade Center one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they're the two, these are, that's one and two, and then seven, and the other ones are much shorter. And I'll show you why I'm showing this to you. <laughs> now this 
is too much. Now, this is a conventional uh, demolition. It, this tower is not being blown apart uh, sideways in every which way. This was rigged by uh, an actual uh, uh, demolition, controlled demolition um, firm, or probably a company, maybe CDI, this, this one that does a whole bunch of these big things. And it is, this is a conventional controlled demolition. What they do is they uh, plant explosives in, 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 say inside, okay, in the core columns, and then knock those out, and the building comes right down, comes straight down. Uh, but we know that this is a controlled demolition because any, everybody and, uh, who knows what they're talking about uh, tells you that this is a controlled demolition. Yeah, plain and simple, controlled demolition. You can you can sit sit in the library like I did you know, for hours, not necessarily you know see, looking at the exact same thing, but looking at controlled demolitions, and and you're not gonna you can this is what you're gonna see. So this is a controlled demolition, uh, no no question about it. They were that building was rigged. Building seven was rigged with explosives. Uh, just like this is a table here, that's a chair there, and that's a, that's a screen. Okay, Those, that we know what these things are. That's, now that's the rover at the bottom of the, uh, uh, that's what was left of World Trade Center 7. Okay, uh, but it's a high rubble pile. Now the reason I'm showing this to you is that uh, the, uh, the other one, uh, the other two rather, uh, towers, were, blo were blown apart uh, in a different kind of method that scientists have not even uh, completely figured out. I mean, some of them have ideas, maybe, but it was so ex such, exotic, such an exotic pro process uh, to destroy, uh, to pulverize, to uh, dustify is the term that, again, Judy with this, this the, the pioneer in that in that field, uh, that's her term. Uh, there wasn't even anything left of the World Trade Center. Okay, the the, the piles in front of, uh, of the uh, excuse me of the twin towers, the piles of the twin towers, okay, were were, were not even there were no piles. Let me put it that way, there were no piles of material when those uh, quarter mile buildings came down. There were no piles. Um, this is a pile. Um, so, it, it, as, as Judy Wood says, it, it went away. Okay, it was, it disappeared. You know, I mean, it was made to disappear. Now, um, this is what happens. Uh, I think I have another. Yeah. Oops, I, I guess I, sh I should have. Um, yeah, that, that was. I should have. I should have had another uh, uh, frame or two because that building is coming down. And um, that would have shown you what happens in a real, you know, natural uh, uh, kind of uh, damage. It, it comes, if it, it falls to the side, that's what happened to that building. I neglected to uh, put in the, the, the other fr frames. Now that's another sign of, remember the script that I showed you in the, in the, in the world, in the Twin Towers? I showed you one. Um, <clears throat> this, is a, 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 this is like the dead giveaway of controlled demolitions. <clears throat> because there are explosives inside the building. And, and they're knocking out the, 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 the main columns, and that's the result. Um, the explosives you know, blast through the windows, right? The, the, the material. That's controlled demolition. Now, what do we see with the Twin Towers? Now, I'm not going to do justice in this presentation to uh, the, 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 the scripts that you can see uh, when they're looking for them, when these, these scientists look at the Twin Towers come down and with you know, close, uh, close observation, they, there were squibs running down the lengths of the sides of the tower. Boom, 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 as the towers came down. Okay, a wave of, of, of squibs. These uh, uh, objects here are, uh, are huge columns being blown laterally. This one here is humongous. And that's uh, a couple of those 14 square, uh, uh, 14 square um, girders uh, of the World Trade Center being blown across the street, okay, and, and impaling, impaling this other building across the street. Now we're, we're told that that happened because there was a fire up there. There's a wide view. Okay, let me see what's going on here. Okay, yeah, I wanted to point out um, this here uh, set of span of, 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 of outside columns with spandrels or whatever. It's a huge, I don't know how huge that thing is. It's pure steel. Watch what happens to it as it comes down. 
something very strange, very strange that, again, Judy would like, she's a pioneer, I can't, I'm going to mention her for a while here. Something that she noticed, that she noticed, because she's a true scientist, she looks at, she looks at facts, she looks at observations, she, she examines things. <clears throat> this, that's the same girder, I believe. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty, I, I think that's the only huge part piece that you can see in, in all the videos. It's trailing a tremendous amount of dust. And why would that be? Why would that be? Okay, they, they knocked the, 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 uh, the, the explosives knocked the columns off, but why would, they be, why would it be trailing dust as it comes down? It's disintegrating. It's literally disintegrating into dust. And, and what's, uh, this is another interesting thing. These are the aluminum cladding because the outer, the, the outer tower, uh, excuse me, columns of the World Trade Center had, um, they were steel, but they had a skin of aluminum, okay? Or, you know, a little covering of aluminum. They're not trailing dust as they come, as they come down, right? Not, not, no dust at all. Whereas the steel is trailing huge amounts of dust. So this, whatever um, energy is being used here is actually turning the steel into dust. Now, uh, this is one of those iconic, for the researchers now, ordinary people, they haven't gotten into this, the depth, of this kind of depth. But um, this is one of the iconic uh, uh, images uh, and, and uh, events for the researchers. See those, those um, spires there? Those are columns of the, of the World Trade Center. Probably, probably core columns. Uh, not probably, they're core columns. What's left after the destruction. So you think that they might, I mean, the buildings around them is already gone, right? So what do you expect to happen to those uh, extremely large uh, and strong uh, steel columns? Would you expect those to go anywhere? Yeah. To do anything but stand there? They didn't fall. No, look at the screen. They evaporated. Oh, let me see. Hold on. I had, I think I had three frames. Maybe not. No, I, yeah, only two. Anyway, uh, we'll see it better in the next set of frames. Anyway, or the next frame. It, 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 it evaporated. And this is a, this amazes the scientists. This is a se sequence like uh, seconds or even fractions of a second. Or second. Well, anyway, that's what happened. That's the same. I think that's the same. Uh, the same um, uh, set of columns, right? These are just seconds apart. How could that have happened? That, those are steel columns. Where did they go? They turned to dust, literally. Literally. So the forces that work on 9/11 on um, are such that we're starting to, you know, people are starting to think that some serious uh, uh, exotic technology was used and powerful, you know, powerful technology. Or oh, by the way, what, what I'm showing you here is a comparison between um, a known nuclear explosion, the Vada test. Okay, look at that. Now you see you know, these, these blasts knocking out these, these huge, um, you know, this, this material. I don't know what that material was, but anyway. And, and that's the World Trade Center there. So there's a similarity. Now, Judy would also uh, examine these holes. This is very strange, because uh, that is a humongous hole in a World Trade Center 6. And there are other holes. There, that's that same hole again. And, I, and I'll show you the scale of this hole. Okay? There is not debris inside that hole. If, if, if the debris from, the, uh, uh, from uh, World Trade Center 1 fell on that hole, fell on that building and made that hole, it would have been sitting there at the bottom. That uh, hole is empty. Very, very, very strange. And there it goes again. That's a mysterious, literally a mystery. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, there are more holes. The, the, you know, that's a huge hole. That's another one. And there's one right there, partly... Uh, filled in. There's another one, and there's another one. <clears throat> so it's mysterious what what uh, what caused those holes. It's not. It's not. This is a, not a, a natural phenomenon. There, there are also a, a whole bunch of burnt, uh, uh, rusted, uh, rusted cars. But this couldn't have been done by the. Okay, this is far away from the uh, from the former twin towers. From where the wind, twin towers were, this was like hundreds of yards, probably, or you know, at least a hundred yards. So what's causing these tower uh, cars to uh, be? damage like this. 
They were not, you know, have you seen, have you all seen the, the clouds of dust being blown out of the, uh, out of the uh, World Trade Centers as they came out, came out? Those were not extremely hot fires. Otherwise, a whole lot of people would have been incinerated. People, you know, escaping or running away from the, uh, or being caught up in those clouds, dust clouds would have been incinerated. They weren't hot. And yet we have these uh, cars that are uh, damaged in strange ways. They're, they're not even conventional fires. And, and I'm not going to get into the detail. When you look at Judy Wood's website, she shows you in detail some of the very peculiar things that happen to these cars. Uh, again, she's a scientist. Uh, she looks at facts. She looks at uh, uh, things as they are and tries to explain them. And finally, um, see that um, crater there? What caused that crater at the bottom of uh, World Trade Center 2? That's not explained either. Okay, um, now, let me see where I'm going here. I forget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, what happened uh, to uh, uh, Building 7 is very strange, or what happened surrounding Building 7 is very uh, strange, but actually it's more explicable. It's not a total mystery at all, actually. Uh, World Trade Center was rigged for demolition. Let me tell you this story. World Trade Center uh, 7 was rigged for demolition um, along with the um, uh, Twin Towers, but it probably wasn't, uh, in, 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 as, as we've seen, it, was, it probably wasn't anything exotic. It was a regular controlled demolition. Um, and it was supposed to come down around 9 o'clock. Okay, these plotters, we know that you know, these, some people plotted uh, and organized this whole thing. They didn't want uh, World Trade Center coming down at 5 o'clock in the afternoon because uh, obviously everybody would be wondering, why did that building come down, right? Uh, and I'll I might as well tell you right now. Um, there were no serious fires in Building 7. Um, and it wasn't damaged by the collapse of uh, World Trade Center 1, which, is, which was closest to it. It was, it was pretty almost unscathed, okay? Yet it came down um, with the World Trade Center 1 and 2. Those three buildings are the only steel frame buildings, uh, high-rises, that have uh, supposedly collapsed or come down in the entire... 100-year history of steel frame buildings, and 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 okay, so the World Trade uh, One and Two were hit by uh, planes, and then they had these fires that were supposed to be raging that we can we can see weren't even raging. There weren't even any fires uh, in in uh, World Trade Center Seven, so that came down by controlled demolition, and it was planned to come down uh, with controlled demolition, as this here proves. Okay, and this is one of the most phenomenal thing, things. This woman is a BBC reporter, and she, she's reporting that uh, world, the 47th so Tower uh, Story building, Solomon Brothers building, close to the World Center, has collapsed. Okay, has collapsed. That's the building right there. For hours before it came down, uh, these reporters uh, all around the world uh, were saying, oh, you know, Building 7 is about to collapse. Oh, okay, collapsed. Why would it have collapsed? It wasn't damaged in any way. I mean, not significant way. There were a couple of really, really piddly fires. Why would it have collapsed? That is proof positive, if we believe in logic, that people knew, some people knew, that that building was going to come down, and the only way they would have been, would have known, was if they either were in the plan to build, bring it down, or if they uh, uh, were told by the people who were going to bring it down of that fact. Okay, so there was a plot. There was, uh, this was orchestrated. This was an uh, W, uh, excuse me, um, 9 11 was a completely uh, orchestrated event. Um, now, why would hijackers, I mean, where, where are these hijackers, uh, you know, uh, what do hijackers have to do with that building coming down? Uh, there are no planes hitting that building, and you better believe that hijackers aren't going to get in that building because it's the headquarters of the uh, CIA, okay, and uh, the FBI, and say that's a government building. Unlike the other towers, uh, World Trade Center 1 and 2, which were commercial, yes. this was a government military headquarters. So some crazy Arabs going to, uh, not crazy, I, I never use that term, but this, these guys were going to uh, go inside uh, World Trade Center 7 and rig it with explosives, right? Yeah, right. It takes months. As, and it, Okay, anyway. Now, Bert Jennings, 
He was uh, a worker in, uh, in World, Trade Center, uh, World Trade Center 7. Now let me try to get through this um, complicated, somewhat complicated uh, story, uh, if I can, in as a short period of time as I can. Um, he went to um, World Trade Center 7 to meet with Mayor Judy, uh, Mayor, uh, Judy uh, Rudy Giuliani, yeah. right, um, on the morning of, of World Trade Center, uh, excuse me, uh, on the morning of 9-11. Uh, and, and then he went into the building and it was empty. Okay, it wasn't damaged again. Not serious, certainly not seriously. In fact, at that point, it probably wasn't damaged at all. He went in and then went up to like the floor where he was supposed to meet him and a colleague of his. And but there was nobody in the building. It was it was evacuated, and he was wondering what was going on. So there was nobody there. So he came. He started coming down, and there were explosives. There was, and then he got to the lobby, and by that time somebody was helping him down because you know I, I think he was probably injured. Yeah, he wasn't. As a matter of fact, injured. And uh, he got down there, and it was all blown apart. He said, "Like, where are we?" He said, "He had just come up the, through the lobby, right?" And and people, uh, and he, but he couldn't recognize the lobby. Okay, so World Trade Center Seven was uh, uh, hit by explosives on, um, early in the morning. Okay, uh, right. Uh, uh, I think it was 9:45. It was supposed to have come down shortly after um, the other two. That would have been the only thing, you know, the sensible thing for the plotters to do, and that's what they attempted. But there, there was there was some glitch. Because no plot is perfect. Criminals, uh, you know, make mistakes. Oh, okay, that's my signal. I'm tapping the thing. That's my signal to skip a little because, um, yeah, I'm going to, hold on. Thank Would you like you. Me to take your cheese? Yes. Would Thank you. you. Like I had everything in perfect order, but I have so much material here, so many photo, uh, so many, so many images that I didn't get to um, putting it in the exact order I wanted throughout. Okay, now uh, has, has, have you all um, or most of you seen this um, this here um, sequence, this uh, this uh, video? Okay, um, this is one of the, this is called the Her Her Herzakani video. There were a lot of videos made, as I mentioned to you, and um, that's one of the, I think this is the most iconic of all. Uh, as, who's seen this video? I'd like to know who's seen this video. Okay. That did not happen. That, there was no plane there. Okay, plain and simple. There was no plane there. <gasps> And I'll show you. I'll show you why. I'll show you how. Okay. Um, see that plane approaching that building uh, behind uh, that's behind the World Trade Center. Okay. That building right there. Yeah. Watch what happens. Oh, I, I, I had originally planned to keep it a mystery for you and see if you could see it, but I, I spilled the beans. It's not it. I'm seeing cake. Where's the bear? Bring out the bear. Come on. Come on. Okay, is that wing in front or behind that building? It's not, it's not, that, it's not that hard to tell. That, that wing is behind the building. But that building, uh, that building is behind the World Trade Center. So it should be in the front. It's fake. I'll play it one more time for you. I'll go through it one more time for you. This is, and um, I was astonished when I saw this. This was like the worst of all the, you know, fakes I saw. I was like, I was blown away. Okay, but this is only one of several huge mistakes that these uh, video uh, producers made. 
because um, you know this is this is not easy stuff. I mean, to some degree, it's not hard, but uh, you can you, you can make mistakes when you uh, do this kind of thing. So that that wing went behind that building, and this most famous. Okay, this most famous um, what do you, what you call it video of the 9/11 strike um, was fake, and I have I have more of those. To some degree, even more astonishing. Okay, let's you know what? Instead of arguing that, I, I, let me uh, let me try to, let me wrap up. But before I do, let me uh, try to get to a, a couple more really quickly. Well, okay, I, I'm I'm running out of time. But there are more, even even more uh, outrageous fakes than that. Uh, you know. Anyway, okay. So um, it's about time um, for me to wrap up. And um, since I'm out of time, I'll just say that. 9-11 was a false flag operation, actually a classic false flag operation. That means that uh, the powers, uh, uh, this government, the powers to be, stage an attack on their own people and blame um, outsiders, foreigners, an enemy. They create an enemy. And the, and the, and the most um, important, or, or rather, uh, most definitive uh, false flag operation, and that we, you know, uh, there were a lot of them, but uh, it was the Reichstag fire when the Nazis um, burnt their own parliament building to make it look like they were being attacked, like they were in, the, the country was in, in deathly danger, and they, therefore they had to carry on their uh, warmongering and rally the people behind them. And that's what we did, that, that's what uh, our government did on 9-11. They staged this, uh, this, this, this um, event so that we would think that we were under attack and therefore had to rally uh, to the government side and uh, spend trillions of dollars on the military and go invade other countries because we had a reason. You know, we, we were justified in going and invading uh, these countries uh, with these uh, killers, right? It was completely fabricated from beginning to end. Thank you. All right, um, all right. Well, that was Ted Aranda. Uh, now, normally we would have our normally we would have our Q and A session at this time. And uh, let me just let me just let's just uh, get this thing out of the way here. Yep. Sure. Now let me just move this. Pull this chair. Pull this table out just a little bit. T uh, or can you can you help me? With this here? Oh, yeah. All right. Happy now. Yes. Yes. Much better. This is this is much much better. Now, this is uh, Q and A now. Yeah, they have a, now we have our question and answer session, and we will, um, which we will get on with the questions uh, as soon as. Um, when Ted comes back to answer our question. First of all, I'd just like to know how many people have a question. Have Just raise your hand. Okay. I do, I all right. Do. I want to remind everybody, I want to remind everybody that, um, that this is a time for questions, not for speeches, and, and that all questions must end with a question mark. Now, uh, so as soon as, as soon as Ted comes back, uh, as soon as our speaker, yeah, as soon as our speaker comes back, then we'll uh, we'll we'll ask have some questions. I see you're here already, and Bill, Bill, Bill Lee, yeah. Okay, Don, <laughs> keep the question time to about 20 minutes. Yeah. So we have plenty I'll of time. I'll tell you what. You know what we might do? I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe we should just go into the rebuttal period because. And then have the no. <laughs> you want some questions for about 20 minutes? All right. Well, I'll tell Once you what. Once Ted gets back, we're going to time you. All right. So uh, what should we do? To, we got we got some we got some dead air time here, Tim. Tell us a joke. All right. No, I'll. All right. I'll tell you what. Let me. Um, 
I want to. All right, all right. Let's let's have uh, let's at least give one rebuttal. Let's start our rebuttals, and then when Ted comes back, then we'll stop the rebuttals and we'll uh, and and we'll go into the Q and A. Okay, so that we can keep things moving along. And we already have a rebuttal speaker who has anticipated this slight change in our programming, and here he is. The, by the way, I just want to give an in, a, a brief intro to Bill Lee. Bill Lee. This is Bill Lee. He came all the way here. Okay, Bill Lee came all the way here from Rockford to give to uh, uh, to, to to be here tonight. Bill Lee gave a presentation. On, on, yeah, Bill Bill Lee gave a presentation at at the uh, yeah on the tenth anniversary here at the College of Complexes back when we were still at the Lincoln Restaurant. And, and the, his presentation was on the 10th anniversary of 9/11. So it was in September of 2011. Uh, I was there. Bill has a Bill has a very different perspective on 9/11. Come on, Don. Get him okay, go on. Bill, go. You're all right, Bill. Okay. Real quick, a bunch of errors in what he said. Stop. Use the mic. We can't hear you. Are you sure you can't hear me? We can't hear you. Man. Okay. Uh, anyways, he made a lot of errors, of course. Uh, he said the columns were solid steel. Of course, there was tubular steel construction. Um, talking about the Empire State Building, that it was hit by a plane and didn't collapse, all the other stuff. Empire State Building. Of course, was built differently. It was a web design as opposed to a tubular design. Completely different uh, building design. Uh, the plane that hit it, of course, was smaller, slower, had less fuel, and the uh, firemen were able to get up there and extinguish the fire, which did not happen in the uh, Twin Towers. Um, he keeps saying that these buildings, they collapse from fire. Anybody miss planes that went into it? Or the planes were fake, no planes went into the World Trade Center, right? Right, right. We didn't see that, didn't happen, wasn't right, fake. Um, dust, talking about all that dust coming down. You know it was an office building? You know what office buildings have? Like drywall, gypsum, concrete. So yeah, all that dust collapsed. He's talking about steel disintegrating. Oh, geez, you got to be kidding. No, of course, steel didn't disintegrate. It was all the dust and everything else from the building material. Um, said Building 7 was unscathed. The problem is, is the street view of most of the pictures you have, it shows an undamaged building. All the damage was on the opposite side, facing the Twin Towers, which of course was closed off and you couldn't see. But there are some pictures of that, okay? Which shows that about 20 stories is torn out of the building and the fire's raging for seven hours. So to say that the buildings were unscathed, is that your belief? The buildings were not damaged, that's your belief? No. You said unscathed. I want to understand what he's saying. How many minutes is he supposed to get? We're, we're going to let him finish for a minute. I'm going to go right back to you in a minute. Okay, we'll let him go do it then, okay? All right. All right. Resume our. Qu we will uh, go to the question and answer Here's session. I'll that. I'll call. Raise your hand if you have a question. Raise your hand. Yeah, uh, Ted, I will call on you if you have a question. Okay, sir. Okay. All right, hey, Ted. Speak loud, please. All right, you ready, Ted? Did anyone die in the four plane crashes on September 11th? If so, how many? Estimate. Zero. There were no planes, okay. and there, there were no right. plane crashes. Not right, next one. Next one. Did anyone die in the two twin towers? If so, how many? About, uh, well, close to 3,000, a little uh, 27, okay, so, 2,800. So, so nobody died in the planes, but people died in the towers. Oh. What planes? The airplanes. The crash in the, in the towers. Do we understand this? So you're saying time? zero in the planes and 3,000 in the towers, right? There were, there were no, there were no planes. Is that your answer? What? Is you, that your answer, Ted? You Is that your answer, Ted? <laughs> Will you please get out of Is that your answer, Ted? Answer, let him All right. Yeah, yeah. You just did. You said zero. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me answer your question. Okay? And let me, can I answer your question? Can I answer your question? How is that possible? Will you shut up and let me ask you a question? That broad moderate. That broad moderate. One fool at a time. Okay? One fool at a time. Okay? I just told Hold on. Let me answer his question. Then he can, you know, do whatever he wants. There were no planes. What part of that don't you understand? So the, you can't have people dying in airliners crashing into buildings when there are no airliners crashing into buildings. Do you understand that? Just ask my question, yes or no. You're delusional, Ted! Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Attack! Go attack! Go attack. Go attack. Go attack. Go attack. Go attack. You just show reality. Show reality. One nice hole at a time. All right, all right. All right. All right. All next right. question. All right, all right. Next question. Ilana. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much. Loud, Alana. Greatest speaker. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank I you. agree with you. So, and it's evidence. So, so my question is, you think maybe, uh oh, maybe it's like UFO involved? Okay, that's a very good question, okay. and I'm glad you brought it up because I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to because it's, you know, getting kind of strange. Okay, first of all, uh, let me be forthright because she brought it up, and she had perfect right to bring it up. Huh? Were they you? Were they you? Motherfucking time. Were they, were they? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Were they you? Was, everybody, calm down, please. Wait, 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 wait. Quiet. Everybody, be quiet. All right. Okay. Now let the speaker talk. Exactly. Okay. Her question was: Were there UFOs involved in uh, the events of 9/11, or at least the World Trade Center? I'm assuming she's talking about the Twin Towers. And my uh, 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 um, opinion on that is: uh, I think there's a possibility. Because uh, does anybody, or does anybody, some of you at least know about crop circles, right? Yeah. yeah. These planes, uh, excuse me, these uh, aliens are able to make these, these, these elaborate patterns in a way that we can't even make them. I mean, I'm not going to get into it. But the point is that the, you needed a platform of an, of an extremely powerful energy. Right. And, yes. and what, what would there have been uh, above the World Trade Center uh, uh, smashing down those, the Twin coffee. Towers, as well as uh, making those uh, holes in the other buildings, okay. and the crater in uh, World Trade Center uh, 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 number two, okay? Um, I don't need, we don't even know uh, how that could have been done with conventional technology, with conventional uh, 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 weapons. All right, Charlie. Yeah, you said no, no buildings have ever come down. During World War II, there were literally thousands of buildings that were dustified using incendiary bombs in Japan, London, England, all over England, and Germany. And uh, many descriptions of everything, like he said, just there were no pieces of these buildings left larger than one fifth. Many counts like that. So, where's this? You've got to have some super tech weapon. Okay, hold on. Let me let me see if I'm understanding you. Uh, what we were talking about, what I was talking about just now, and uh, no buildings ever come down. Oh no, I didn't say that. I said by fires, by ordinary fires. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me answer your question. Wait, wait. You, you have, you have, yeah, he knows. Uh, there are ordinary office fires. Okay. That have happened. Okay. Well, right now I'm talking about the United States. So I don't want to go abroad. In we have plenty, of hundreds of office fires in the United States over the years, um, and no, no uh, uh, steel frame building has been brought down by uh, by fire. That's a fact. It's a well-known fact if you look into it. So what's your so what's your question? There are, obviously buildings have been bombed. Thank you, sir. They were bombed. Those were incendiary. Bombs. B-O-M-B, right? Okay, okay, okay. Let me, so, so, hold on, hold on. Okay, so then you're talking, you're talking about bombs over there. Just now, I was talking about office fires, buildings that are not bombs. Incendiary is what? Uh, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie, next question. Next, next, next question. All right. You, sir. Was one target more important than the other? The Pentagon or the World Trade Building? Okay, that's another good question. Um, according to Barbara Honiger, and uh, I agree with it to a large degree, um, it was critical to hit the Pentagon. Now, if, if you had just hit the World Trade Center, people might have said, well, you know, they're just a bunch of businessmen blowing up, you know, whatever. The World Trade Center I, uh, I was a commercial, uh, 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 well, they were mainly commercial buildings with a whole lot of banks and uh, whatever. The Pentagon is the uh, center of the American military. That is, those are that's our, our, our forces. That's that's um, you know our uh, military headquarters. Um, so to uh, make it look like the United States is being attacked, um, you know, in this warlike way, okay, you have to go beyond just some commercial buildings, even if it's a lot of deaths, okay. Um, so that yeah. So according to Barbara Honiger, it was critical. In fact, even to according to her, more important to hit the Pentagon to make uh, it seem like the country. Not just some bankers in on uh, uh, in New York uh, were attacked on 9/11. Okay, uh, Bill. Okay, so you understand, hundreds of people around the Pentagon said they saw a plane hit the Pentagon. You know that. Hundreds of people said that. I don't know about hundreds. 
Okay, fine. A hundred. I don't know how many. Okay, there's a list of at least hundred. I'll, I'll get I'll get back to that point by the way. Yes. Uh, so please give one witness statement and a source that said they saw anything other than a plane hit the Pentagon. You know, there are a lot of witnesses. Lot of, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me answer your question. I do the best I can. There are plenty of witnesses, but I don't have them right here. See this blank piece? Hold on. Wait, wait. I want to just set a new rule. Once you've asked your question, stop talking yeah. yes. and let the other person answer. Right. Right. Including you, Bill. Right. So, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. On my computer um, uh, right now, sitting uh, at home, I, that was, that's not my computer, it's uh, my friend's. Um, uh, and I'm in, in notes, I have lots of names and, 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 and detailed uh, uh, observations of people who did not see a plane or who saw a missile or who saw a military plane, okay? I don't have their names. See, see I bought a blank piece of paper. I didn't have time. Uh, I was you know, sweating bullets just to get this far uh, in this detail to present to you. I have it. I have that detail, but it's at home. And if you want, I'll send it to you uh, at another time. But uh, next question, please. The next question. All right. Uh, no. Okay. I see you have your hand. Up. Sorry. All right. Before we go to round two of the questions, I want to know if there's anybody who has a question who has not already answered Andy. the question. Andy, go ahead. Loud, Andy. Uh, uh, did you run across uh, the evidence showing that there was no, virtually no rubble pile on the ground at the twin towers because they were scattered over Lower Manhattan and there's a cloud of dust? Yeah. That's. Uh, you, that's see, you see that more than one source? Uh, yeah, uh, I think so. But uh, the one person, because she's the only one, uh, not the only one, but she's the main one who has made an issue of it, who has, uh, set, who has stated the obvious. Her uh, book is called Where Did the Towers Go? I have it here, actually. Yeah. Uh, what I'm looking for is the space where she calculates how much debris should have been remaining after the, um, the towers fell based on the size of the building, what it contained. 13 feet of steel. Oh, no, 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 but she has, she has calculated how much it should be. I'm, I'm trying to look for it, but... Well, let me, 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 uh, I didn't buy the book uh, because I didn't have I didn't want to spend the money and I didn't have the time to get into it given all the other stuff that I had and plus she's on the web she has a website which has a whole lot of the detail a lot of the uh, photographs and everything um, she uh, has stated uh, or rather um, uh, looked at the obvious the obvious is that uh, there were a quarter mile 110 story buildings that came down and there was almost literally nothing solid left of them. When, uh, when people looked at uh, the ground, ground zero, okay, there was not a, a huge pile of degree, uh, debris. There were the, the spires uh, on the outside, uh, uh, okay, and you know why those were left? Hold on. And you know why those were left? Because it's hard to uh, rig demolitions when there are 100 people in the lobby. Okay, the rest of the, the inside, they could get inside uh, the elevator shafts and rig the, rig the explosives, rig the, rig the building. But on the outside, which was always, you know, always full of people, uh, okay, so that's, the, that's that reason. But yeah, um, basically, there's, there is not enough material uh, by, by a long shot left uh, on ground zero to account for all that material that the building should have, uh, 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 you know, uh, collapsed into and had a huge uh, debris pile, not in 13 feet. I don't know where you got that from. Uh, I don't know how you calculate that. No, it should have been no, many... Long video. Wait, wait, Charlie. It should have okay. been, 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 been many stories high. So that is a basic fact. And the, one of the beauties of, of Judy Wood is she, uh, you might call her a macro scientist as, a, as opposed to a micro scientist. Uh, 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 David Jones, I think his first name. I, I think his first name is David. Uh, he's he's looking into the molecular. You know, um, uh, he's studying in laboratories, looking at the microscopes, and he's doing good work too. Uh, but Stephen, uh, but Judy Wood is looking at what everybody can see. Okay, uh, so she's particularly compelling for that reason. She says there was a weapon. Hey Charlie. Oh, okay, Charlie. You, hey, one, yeah. you have to raise your hand if you have a question. All right. Now, all, all right. right. Is there a weapon? Okay, Charlie. Charlie. You, you have not been called on. You are out of order. Let's get Dave one. Travis, Ooh, go ahead. Yes, there was Thank a you. Weapon. Uh, one of those planes was scheduled to fly into the White House. And the uh, passengers on that plane overpowered the uh, uh, people that were in there that had uh, taken it over. And I understand they had done that with box cutters. And that uh, that plane was forced down 
and it landed in Pennsylvania uh, and never did get to fly into the White House. That was the only one that was unable to hit its target. Here, here, what's your question? Uh, and yeah, well, the question <coughs> is, is that there was crew mem uh, uh, there was uh, passengers in that plane, so there would have been passengers in the other planes too. Not. Okay, <coughs> that um, uh, was as much uh, a fabricated uh, thing as anything else. As a matter of fact. It's even much more laughable. I mean, I mean, literally laughable, because when you go to uh, Shankville uh, or you look at the, the uh, photographs of uh, the supposed uh, uh, plane crash site, there was no plane crash site. There was a little crater about the size of uh, part of this room, not even the whole room, or maybe you know that wall to the next, maybe. Okay, and about like five, ten feet deep. Okay, and there is no uh, 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 airplane debris in there. There was, uh, there were like bits of trash. So people said they looked like uh, one uh, person said it looked like a, 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 a truck came in and dumped a little load of, of trash in there. There was no uh, uh, debris of any significance at there. So that didn't happen. There was, and then secondly, uh, very quickly, uh, the, uh, the there are no. You can't make phone calls. Okay, in 2001. From airplanes, the technology doesn't exist. Exist. Uh, it was announced in 2004 that they were coming up with the te technology. They came in online in 2008. From 2008, you can make uh, cell phone calls from uh, airplanes at, at cruising altitude. That could not. That did not happen and could not happen in, in 2001. And, and secondly, the, the when you look examine the uh, the content of those phone calls, it's like a bad high school play. It's just it's just silly. Okay. All right. So, the, so those phone calls didn't happen. There were no planes. There were no people in any plane going down in Chancellorsville County. They actually went to probably Cleveland and, and unloaded those people. All right, Mike McCune. Last question, Don. We got to get through okay. bottles after this. Uh, Mike McCune. Okay, so um, I don't know if you made it clear uh, what did what did cause the towers to fall and how was it carried out? Okay, um, the best. Uh, uh, the, uh, you can you can look at it and uh, from the evidence and 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 think that it was probably uh, very explosive, uh, very powerful regular explosives like uh, um, I forget uh, I forget the, the the terms for those particular brands, but demolition companies use them. But on a, like a, a, a higher order conventional explosives, huh? I don't know that one, but anyway, anyway, okay. So, but, and, and in addition, um, uh, some exotic energy, like a directed energy beam, which is what Judy Wood talks about. Now, uh, Stephen Jones and, and some others talk about thermite, but uh, it's not conclusive, I don't think, from what I can tell, how you would use thermite uh, to bring uh, to make explosive, because it's not an explosive material. It's not a de detonating type of material. It, so there are technical problems with thermite, although it might have been about, now we're talking about an unlimited budget by the uh, you know the U.S. military uh, who and the Los Alamos uh, labs and all these scientists they might have something made out of thermite or using thermite to create those uh, kinds of, um, uh, of bombs and send or whatever but by itself from uh, what ordinary the sci people and scientists know you can't use thermite in that way that doesn't mean that they, they didn't do so. Okay, now uh, who else has did, Tim? Did you have a question? No, I just thank you. All yeah. right. Uh, okay, sir, go ahead. Yeah, my question was... Uh, Loud, please. Did you ever see the video that they had on where they, sh they timed the amount of time that it took the tower to fall, and it was like 11.3 seconds, and they said from that height it would take 10.3 seconds for something to fall at free fall speed. Did you ever hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that, okay, uh, free, free, fall, free fall speed for a building, a colla a, a building collapsing, so so um, you you have a, 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 the top of the building coming down at free fall speed or close to free fall speed. Okay, it's it's a little bit nebulous um, uh, how you calculate because you can't see uh, at the rubble like halfway down. You know you can't see like when things hit or whatever. Um, but it was uh, more or less a free fall speed that all the towers came down. And that means that they were, uh, uh, the supporting structure was destroyed by demolition. Otherwise, uh, no credible scientist on the face of the earth is going to tell you, uh, in violation of uh, Newton's third law of motion, that this uh, uh, top part of the building is going to come down onto the remaining standing part of the, uh, 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 part of the building and smash it down without uh, slow, without encountering any resistance at, at the same uh, speed as if you held a brick on the top of the uh, World Trade Center without any resistance whatsoever. That is 
sheer uh, nonsense. All right. Um, all right. Now I see that you're. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, you, oh, uh, sir, did you have a question? No, just thank Okay. Well, you had a question before. Before I get to a second round of questions, I want to ask if there's anybody who has a question who has not already asked a question. No. Well, actually, I do. And uh, so I wanted to ask you a question. I just wanted this is kind of just a real quick question. It's sort of a multi-part question. But first of all, you, now you're, you you are saying that no aircraft hit the buildings on 9/11. No, no. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll ask. Let me yeah, yeah, finish sure, first. Sure, okay. Sure, okay. Sure, I know you're I know sure, you're anxious sure, to talk. But, yeah. All right. Now, first of all, all right. Okay. I think you already explained what you what you, you believe yes. happened. Now, uh, I want I just want to ask. You're you're maintaining that the videos. Uh, showing that all of the videos that show an airplane hitting hitting the World Trade Center are fake, uh, no matter who made them, and, and as I understand it. Now, I want to ask you, what about the large number of eyewitnesses who saw who saw the airplane striking the buildings with their own eyes? How do you, what, how, what's your explanation for that? Okay, I'm very glad you asked this question because I have a hell of an answer for you. <clears throat> okay, um, it's it's not necessarily true that no planes hit any building. Well, I'm very careful to say that no airliner hit any building. Okay, um, at the at the at the uh, World Trade Center, it's possible that these um, unknown aerial vehicles that are caught on camera, uh, which is, it's too complicated to get into right now, uh, struck the buildings. But they're not airliners. Um, nobody can look at the evidence and say they were airliners. Definitely, uh, no airliners were anywhere. Uh, near uh, the world, uh, uh, the Twin Towers. Now, and the reason uh, you can say that is because the videos uh, uh, show something that's impossible. Some of the videos are patent fakes. They're clear, uh, plain fakes that any five-year-old would say, hey, you know what? That uh, wing went behind the building. That guy, you know, that must be a fake video. And of course, your five-year-old would be right. Okay. Um, but uh, you can you can show that uh, th this thing this uh, phenomenon didn't actually happen from the physics of it. Uh, well, I examined one of the uh, videos of a plane going laterally um, as the most as opposed to diving, but going uh, at least in the video going uh, uh, into the tower, and you had a face-on view of the side of the tower and the plane. And I and I, I was so intrigued by this physically impossible uh, thing that I took a a ruler and I measured the speed uh, frame by frame of the plane um, going into the tower and it did not slow down. It, as, it was as if the plane, the, uh, the, the building wasn't there and it was just flying through space and in a video you can make a plane fly into a building. In real life you have a collision. All right, uh, all right. now is there anybody else who has a question? No? All right. Billy, you, Billy ahead, does. Sir. All right, sir. Mr. Ted, uh, who, who are you going to give these facts to? What authority is, are, are, is going to help you to prosecute and bring these criminals to justice? Okay, these criminals, unfortunately for us, are our government. You don't, you don't try the government. You can't try the federal government. Okay. Um, ordinary citizens do not try the federal government. Congress could uh, impeach the president, but they're in the, on the same team. Okay, they're all, they're on one team. The American people are on another team. You have some quote unquote liberals on their team. Okay, you have some quote unquote conservatives. You have some uh, uh, billionaires, and you have some millionaires. Okay, you might have some thousandaires. Okay, but you don't have ordinary people. Those are the government. Those are the elite. That's the power elite. Uh, that's the oligarchy. Okay, uh, uh, and Obama and and, and Pelosi and uh, Reid and the whole bunch of them are on that team. Okay, that's the government. Now, on, 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 uh, uh, during the Bush administration, we had the most monstrous of the monsters in, in power. Okay, but they're all monsters. And you have to understand that. And you, so you can't, uh, you're not going to get a confession out of Cheney, uh, uh, you know, for the next uh, few uh, uh, billion years. Maybe, you know, in a trillion years you might, okay, if you're lucky. Okay, so you, you, don't, you don't try these people. They're not subject to being tried by, our, uh, by, by anybody. Because they are the powers that be. All right. Now we have time for one more question from the. Uh, oh, sir, did you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the passengers on, on the, the, the passenger list for those two aircraft, if, if these planes did not go into the building, what actually happened to these passengers? Uh, um, okay. 
That is uh, one of the uh, more uh, less well understood things because you can see that the plane didn't hit the building, but what the heck happened to these passengers? Uh, the, the, the manifest, uh, or rather the list of passengers, don't make too much sense. For instance, there are no Arabic names on them. Okay, so who are these passengers? There's no evidence whatsoever, and the FBI concedes this, that there were no uh, hijackers uh, on the plane. Uh, they're, they were, they're, they're named, there are no Arabic names on the, on the manifest. Uh, people uh, looked into the, tried to uh, investigate the, the passengers, and it's all mysterious. Um, some of them, you know, look like made-up people. One theory is that um, many, if not uh, all of those people, were actually in on the plot. Because we're talking about maximum 200 people. Now, uh, one of the strange things about those planes was that they, they, were, on a they were all on cross-country uh, flights, supposedly, and they were all at a quarter capacity, which doesn't normally happen. Well, now, why would that be? Because it's, it's d uh, difficult to round up enough people uh, and get enough money to pay these people to carry on, to be involved with, in this plot with you, okay? Right, right. So these people were, were, were more than likely uh, participants in the plot. When you have, one of the researchers made this very excellent point. Um, he said, when you have an unlimited, literally an unlimited budget, a black budget of trillions and trillions of dollars, you know how much, okay? Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can arrange things. Okay. All right, let's have a... All right, now Ted, all right, now we're going to get into the rebuttals now. Now I just want a show of hands. All right, show of hands. How many people want to speak? Raise your hand. Okay, that's one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, eight. Keep your hands up, people. Uh, wait a minute, let me count over again. Keep your hands up. One, two, three, uh, four. Keep your hands up. Five, six, Seven, um, I'm counting seven uh, people so far. That's eight, I think. I count nine, and then we got our speaker is ten. So, so it's ten people, um, five minutes each. No, four. Oh, wait. Oh. Four. Four. Four, four. More minutes? Two minutes. No. Okay, let's make it. Let's make it four minutes each. Five. All right. Okay, five minutes each. All right. We start counting now. Here's Sid. Okay. Five minutes. I want to get into the political aspect of this, and that is we had a permanent. Uh, enemy for about 65 years in the Soviet Union. Now the Soviet Union was our permanent enemy and the United States is an imperialist country and empires got to expand constantly. So that's why we had a permanent enemy. And if you look at the history after the Second World War we find the invasion of Greece through the Truman Doctrine. That was the first thing. We put in the junta into Greece in order to exploit that country. Then we had a war in Korea. Why do we have a war in Korea? Well, China got, was just through with its revolution. And we wanted to overthrow China. Remember, they used to say, we lost China. We lost it. We owned it. American interests were in China. A friend of mine was in the Marines in the Second World War. And what was he doing in the Marines? He was guarding standard oil installations in China. And of course, after that, we had Vietnam. And then we supported dictators throughout Latin America. Latin America is a very rich, rich uh, country. You had a lot of fruit. You had copper and chili. You had a lot of meat in Argentina, and we had so many very vested interests in the, all these various countries. Now, what happened is the Soviet Union and their Eastern Bloc fell apart. Now, I can't go into that. It'd be a long thing. So we had to find a new enemy. And who's the new enemy? Terrorism. Now, that is re not real enemies. A terrorist is just a, a, a guy that commits a crime. Like, for instance, we just had that trouble in France. Now, what did that do to the French Empire? Nothing. It's nothing but a pinprick. 
against an empire. It doesn't melt anything. It's not trying to overthrow the government or anything. The whole thing's ridiculous to install fear into the American people in order to order them to go along with the American Empire. So we can keep invading, invading, invading. The Roman Empire eventually fell apart because it was overextended. The United States Empire is overextended now. And that's why we're having so much trouble in the United States. And it has to look for constant enemies. When en one enemy goes away, another enemy comes and takes its place. Now, during this period, from about 1989 to 2000, we were looking for an enemy. We couldn't find one. But then along comes the Twin Towers. And now we got a new permanent enemy, and we try to install fear into the American people so the American people support the American Empire. Excellent. You get a wait, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. Listen, listen, I, you actually, what I can do is I, because you took about uh, three minutes the first time, so I can do two minutes. Hey, taxes with you enemies, yeah. sir. Taxes. No, actually, that was your rebuttal period. No, let him, let him go for another two, three I'll minutes, let you go Don. For two minutes. Go ahead. How uh, are this place? So much to say. Okay, this is the way the conspiracy theorists do things, okay? They have this pile of coins. And they pick out a few pennies. Oh. Okay. Got the shiny penny. This proves everything I say. Oh, this other stuff? Ignore that. That's nothing. Shiny penny. Look at the shiny penny. Uh, he said that, um, okay, couldn't make calls. I made air phone calls in the 1990s, before September 11th, uh, out of planes. Uh, he said Building 7 was unscathed. Go to the internet, you can find the pictures of uh, why sections of Building 7 were damaged. Um, anybody here a jet engine mechanic? Raise your hand. Okay. Anybody ever see what a bird does to a titanium engine blade? It shreds it. It's all about speed and mass. Things going real fast, hitting things can do amazing things. You show that. Oh, I see it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Jesus is quoted as saying that there are some people who will not see the plain truth. They'll strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. I was going to say that he was feeding a camel tonight. It's much bigger than that. He's giving you a whale of a story. It is so unfactual and so devoid of facts. Now, I'm going to be coming back September 12th and answer all your questions. Now, you got the sheets, which answers most of them. Um... Okay, this is how the games play with conspiracy theorists, people, right? They say, no plane hit the Pentagon. Well, what about the witnesses who said it? Well, but uh, they didn't really see it. They only saw a plane. But did it hit the Pentagon? There's people that saw it hit the Pentagon. Oh, but they're government employees, so you can't believe them. How about debris of the Pentagon? Oh, it was all planted. Well, where's the engine? There's no engine. Uh, here's pictures of the engine. Oh, that was planted. Everything's fake. This is how the games play. Um, Fine time, Billy. Okay. So, uh, the truth is out there, just like uh, Mulder said to Scully, okay? But you have to get out of the basement, take, you know, get dressed, change from your pajamas, and look for the truth. It's out there. I really, I really want to get up here and rebut. However... The guy there had to get up because he'd been up two times talking that bullshit. Unfair! Now, Unfair! No, he had One full at a time! One full at a time! Now, uh, they say the established official version is that Columbia discovered America. How in the fuck somebody can discover America when 10 million people is already living? Yes. They told you somebody was behind the cloud. So they got people there, go to wall, defending somebody behind the cloud. So, well, some people will not take what the facts are. They rather follow Henry. They rather follow X. They rather fo follow C and so forth. 
man, if you can look at a goddamn picture with all that dust and go tell me that the building itself is making up all that dust, you got to be silly. So give me a break, please. I like the white hat. The white hat is beautiful. Really, tonight, before I get into my 9-11 presentation or anything like that, I'd like Susie and Chris to come on up for a minute, please. Come on up here. I would like to, uh, we need, we owe both of these people a debt of real thanks for letting us come into the restaurant tonight, giving us some really good service. So please, congratulate Chris. Over the years, we have the, the parent, parent group, the Scholars for Truth, uh, uh, many years ago. I'll be very quick, I won't even use all that. Uh, there's a problem with the no planes argument, uh, and you hit on it a little bit. Um, there were four targets. If they're using cruise missiles, why did they miss out on the fourth one? Uh, why did they just change their minds or something like this? Uh, you do have a problem with the passengers. You're letting off your airplanes in Cleveland. I guess you could get free round trip tickets for the inconvenience of having to remain anonymous for the rest of your life. You've got to do a little more fact checking. That you said that the, air, the terrorist names were on the list. Those are like victims list or memorial list. That was not a list of everyone on the plane. That was a list, a memorial list. They didn't put the terrorist names on it. They said there was a blatant mistake by the um, truthers on that one. It was an embarrassment. Getting into it, uh, we come along. I've been studying World War II history for many, many years. There's nothing unique about this situation here. Conventional weaponry of the 8th Air Force. Uh, they. Uh, used incendiary weapons you, throughout the war and in Japan. Uh, dustification was found on, throughout Europe, the European theater of the war. Uh, this woman has come out with a book that is quite frankly, I'm, I won't even, it's bizarre. She claims there's some directed energy weapon, uh, very little explanation how it is. I guess they parked it on Staten Island and aimed it at this building. Why they didn't use it at the Pentagon, I don't know. She made some very bad mistakes in that book. She says cars were done in this fashion. People said that's the way cars burn. Uh, they even the city had moved cars to to clear the rubble of the of the twin towers. And she says, look at, oh my God, the the beam got cars across the city because those cars were moved there by the city so they could clean the rubble. Now the one thing I'm going to tell you that you've got, you won't find in this, and then we saw a little bit of this, if you watch the videos, they don't take, use anything from the news that's done on 9-11 itself. You got a girl out there with a cameraman and they're piecing together a story. And that's what I mean, they're putting together a story. And they don't have a lot of details and facts. And so you see this throughout, the, especially that one loose change. It's nothing but news people on the site who talk to, go to somebody and say, do you know what happened? And they go, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then they say, well, the official version differs from what the news girl found on the street. I mean, I do this with the media. And I'll end right now. Here's the thing. They call us up and they ask us, our group, about public transit. I always amaze us that I see news accounts where they wait outside a station and say, how's public transit in Chicago? Well, what does that person know? This is what they do. But watch out. If they use all the things, news things from that 
I wouldn't pay much attention to it. But thank you very much for kicking around. Can you guys behave yourself? Thank you, James. I appreciate it, honey. Some of you have attended. I've given uh, probably a dozen talks here on how the media, through censored news, shapes and molds public opinion in America, maintains people in a state of a bubble of mythological ignorance. Uh, during the Bush years, uh, a man named Phil Rockstraw wrote an article. 2007, he says, Americans, many of them are living in a Disneyland of militant ignorance. They're completely ignorant about basic facts, and they're militant to the point where they will verbally attack or try to slow down uh, the academic spread of knowledge uh, if somebody gives them an inconvenient fact. Like Jack Nicholson was famous in that movie, You Can't Handle the Truth. Remember that? Well, some people can't handle the truth. And so the question I've been wrestling with for the last six or seven years is, how do you tell the difference? How can you tell the difference, distinguish between somebody that's honestly uninformed, and there's several levels of being uninformed, but they're a patriotic American, they're honestly uninformed of the facts. How do you tell the difference between that and a disinformation specialist who is pretending to be an uninformed American or an ordinary patriotic American? We have disinformation specialists spread all through this country from the university level on down and they will produce reports for enough money saying, oh, smoking four packs a day is not hazardous to your health, all kinds of things. They slow down the spread of knowledge that would cut into the profits of big corporations. On 9-11, you can start with what Charlie just mentioned about uh, where's the credible news sources. If any of you are interested, write down, there's two websites you can go to. One of them is called Want to Know Info, and there's 12 different disciplines on that site, but wanttoknow.info is uh, they give you uh, one page, two page, ten page printout of verifiable things that were recorded in the media. Uh, reality. Want to Know Info is one of them. The other site it has, and it's offensive for people standing up questioning when you have thousands of patriots from different groups coming forward and risking their lives and careers. Patriots question 9-11. There's uh, information on that back table over there. You have 220 senior military intelligence, law enforcement, many of them from naval intelligence, uh, all saying 9-11 story is an official crock. Uh, you have 1,500 architects and engineers, 250 pilots saying that everything we were taught about the main story of the pilots, the planes, is a total crock. Firefighters for 9-11 Truth. If you log on to the firefighters video, you will see firefighters videos at the fire station back, those survivors, they were talking about how they, they witnessed from a block away. They didn't get killed in the collapses. It, Boom, 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 boom. I watched the layers of explosives going right down the buildings. The Twin Towers, the layers of explosives went down faster than the speed of gravity, so they were converted to dust before anything hit the ground. The two Twin Towers went sideways in the wind as a cloud of dust spread over the lower. That's fact number one. Number two, seven buildings. All seven buildings of the World Trade Center were demolished with explosives, and we only had two plane crashes. A fifth grader can do the math on that one. But the media always ever talks about the Twin Towers. Never mention the other third tower that came down in a classic controlled demolition. The idea that that building was damaged by falling debris and fell later at 5.20 in the afternoon after that woman had been standing out there reading the script. Reading the script for 25 minutes. Building 7 has come down. Building seven, They cut off her microphone just before they triggered the explosives. So the whole day of 9-11 the media was reading a script to us. There are eyewitnesses at the Pentagon. People that were there, they recorded, they said internal bombs went off in the Pentagon. Those of us that survived, we came out the door uh, out one of the holes and we didn't see any plane wreckage on the lawn. There was no plane there at all. The Pentagon has cameras all over that. They have never released the film of whatever it was 
the pilots for 9-11 Truth think it was a cruise missile that flew it in the side of the Pentagon. But the pilots for 9-11 Truth have debunked every single piece of what we were told about any kind of big plane hitting the Pentagon. That's a total fairy tale. Give me just a couple of seconds. The physicist for 9-11 published an article in 2005 saying, the events of 9-11, we can say with certainty, involve controlled demolition and aircraft substitution. All right. So the information is out there. Come see me later with the literature if anybody wants me. Wait, wait, Charlie, one fool at a time. It's yeah. Rob's All turn right. now. This fool has the microphone. Okay. Uh, I saw a lot of dust, and I think a lot of dust has been thrown in our eyes. Oh. And uh, uh, you can, uh, the, there are people who will contend uh, for all sorts of theories. Uh, sometimes they have reasons. Uh, the uh, arms manufacturers who want contracts will see dangers and uh, perils and uh, looming wars, and they are calling for preparation for those wars, and then for the war, uh, so that and then, then there are the people in the military who uh, need to uh, they need to experiment with uh, the new toys of, of war, and uh, they, they they want uh, to buy uh, new planes, new tanks, new uh, missiles, whatever. Uh, there. Uh, detection systems, uh, 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 armaments of all sorts. <sighs> there are those who are worried about uh, the, the recessions and depressions that are cyclical in our uh, market economies. Uh, and they, they would like a little uh, excuse for large government spending on something that you've got to have because they're out to get you. Uh, that is the rationale uh, for, uh, for authoritarianism, uh, police states, uh, for uh, all sorts of things. Uh, re repression. Uh, this country has had uh, potential concentration camps since the uh, 1950s. Oh, we had concentration camps uh, during uh, World War II uh, for aliens, uh, whether they were Germans, Italians, or or Japanese, uh, and, uh, and for, for other people too. Uh, there, there were occupied countries, uh, there, were, uh, there were unreliable elements. There always will be, I hope. Uh, but sometimes there, what do you do with people you think of as potential enemies. Uh, look at uh, the state of Israel. Uh, it's a settler uh, 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 colonialism uh, that uh, regards the natives, uh, the Palestinians, as uh, a potential enemy, a potential uh, armed uh, insurgents and so on so so they they have uh, a, a very disciplined uh, way of dealing with uh, their the populations they control uh, but what we've got 
we have rationales that are built on sometimes fictions, but also on facts. There are people who do not like the United States very much, and there are reasons for that, because we interfere in a whole lot of people's lives. We support the uh, various emirs and uh, uh, kings and the Saudis and so on in the Gulf states and so on. Okay. Well, your time is that, up, Brom. Yep. Yeah, that uh, wasn't five minutes. That, okay. That's not popular in those no lands. All right. Love you. Love you, Brom. All right. Any other, uh, anybody else wish to give a rebuttal speech? All right, ma'am, co uh, come on down. Okay. That's right. Okay, I don't know if you remember, but back in the 90s, uh, the Twin Towers were under attack. And there was a news crew that was there, and they actually talked to the engineer of the building. And the engineer of the building said, this building is the finest building and will never come down. He said it was built. I still remember him saying this. This is why I believe exactly what he said. I knew when I saw what happened that it was fake, that it was not real. Because he sat there and said, this building is built so well that even if a plane were to go into it and hit it, it wouldn't do anything. Okay? This, this was on broadcast. This was on the television. So... And also, I have a friend who was an air phone operator. And to have an air, she actually worked on the airlines, would go on. She was not a stewardess. She worked for the air phone company. You would have to go and get her. And she would have to plug in the phone for you if you wanted to make a call. So it's not like a cell phone. So if you're being... a under attack on a plane and you're going to make a phone call, you're going to have to get this lady to come over. They're not going to let you get up to make a phone call on an air phone. No way. Hmm. And look at the movie Independence Day. You watched any of these movies now. Look at the graphics. They look so real. We just played the other night, we put, with my husband, we played Grand Theft Auto. The graphics in there is so real. So, you got to have an open eyes of what, what our government really does. I mean, it lies to us all the time. It took, it took black men and gave them syphilis for tests. It lied to us with Vietnam, with Agent Orange. It's lied and lied all the time. Okay, time. Okay. All right. All right, now, uh, is there anybody else, is there anybody else who, uh, who would like to give a rebuttal speech? All right? Uh, I just want to say a few brief words. Uh, first of all, um, first of all, in, in, you know, as, as a lot of you know, I... I, I tend to function as the um, fact checker. I, I just want to—I don't know if Bill Lee's still here, but he left some money. Maybe he intends that as a tip. But if, if not, uh, he might want to come and pick it up. That's a, some loose change lying here on the table. <laughs> and um, so, second, um, now, first of all, the, what this lady was saying about she was refer, uh, when she was talking about uh, giving black men syphilis, that she was refer, I think assumed that she was referring to the Tuskegee Institute um, incident. She was referring to the Tuskegee Institute. Uh, incident um, where you no, know, what they they did not actually the, the the black men who were part of this medical test were actually not given syphilis. They were men who already had syphilis, and and they were told they were being treated for syphilis. But actually, half of them, what they didn't realize is that half of them were the control group. They weren't being treated because they wanted to see they wanted to they, they wanted to see what would happen to the control group. If any of you know anything about science, they wanted to see what would happen to the control group 
uh, well, they got sick and died. So they falsely told the, these men that they were being treated for syphilis and would get better, but in fact, they just got sicker and died. That's what actually happened in Tuskegee. Now, um, what we've heard tonight is, um, what we've heard is that apparently that um, everything we've been told about 9-11 is a lie, or at least by everything we've been told by the government, the official version is false. Now, I don't know which official version it is. I was telling Ted this, because there's actually, the Bush administration has blamed Al-Qaeda for 9-11, but they also blame Saddam Hussein for 9-11 at one point. So, so there's, there's, there's actually, there's, so there's actually two different official versions uh, flying around. Now, um, now, there's, uh, so apparently the, the official version is completely false. What actually happened is that, um, is that instead of the planes, instead of the planes being hijacked, uh, what actually happened is that the, the, the planes were sort of hijacked, but not really. They were taken to Cleveland, and then the passengers were, I don't know, they disappeared. We don't know what happened to the passengers. And, and then, meanwhile, these UFOs, these unidentified flying objects that look like large jet liners, uh, crashed into the World Trade Center, uh, and maybe one crashing into the Pentagon, and, uh, but that didn't actually cause the buildings to, to, to fall down. What actually caused the buildings to fall down is... Um, is is these these controlled demolitions by by I guess people working for the government who 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 planted all these explosives without anybody in the building way ahead of time without anybody in the building knowing about it and then caused the buildings to collapse and and then since that wouldn't have been enough to produce the effect that they're talking about they also used a some kind of energy ray about which we know nothing some kind of brand new technology we never heard of it, it, right in order to uh, they were probably, that they that they fired at the buildings and made all that dust appear and, and caused all the steel to turn into dust now uh, in addition uh, so so apparently that's what oh and all of the videos including the home videos uh, that show air, jetliners hitting the Pentagon are all fake they've all been they're all they're all uh, Photoshop jobs by the by the government so, so all the videos are fake. Oh, oh, and there may have been space aliens involved, Mar you know, like from, from Mars or something. So, so what they may, they, these, these, these may be the very same people, these may be the very same people who, uh, who did the crop circles. It's, it's pot, you know. Uh, all right, now, there's a few, I detected, I detected a few flaws in this. First of all, uh, first of all, the crop circles have already been proven to be a hoax. And second, uh, building seven collapsing is um, it actually was severely damaged when they show those videos of it falling down it's shown from the side opposite where the, where the where the twin towers had been if you look at if you see photos of the side facing the twin towers there are all these gigantic gaping holes in the building from debris thrown out by the twin towers so building seven actually had sustained enough damage to cause it to collapse of its own accord um, how much time I got Tim you're running at three minutes Okay. All right. Let me seconds. just. Let me just. Okay. That's fine. All right. Uh, all right. Now, I think this is a really contentious issue. This is. I think this is. You know, talking about 9/11 has really raised a lot of people. You know, it's it's an issue that people have very strong feelings about, and and that's understandable, because on the one side, um, there's you know you have something that nobody ever talked about tonight. No one. Um, Al Qaeda. And Osama bin Laden. Okay. Nobody, nobody said. I never heard anybody say the words Al Qaeda tonight or Osama bin Laden. Nobody talked about the fact that bin Laden had already launched a series of terrorist attacks on the United States before 9/11. Um, nobody, for example, talked about the. Someone did briefly mention the first World Trade Center bombing, which was done by a bunch of independent guys, but nobody mentioned. Nobody mentioned that. Nobody mentioned the the prior attack on on the coal in 2000 or before that. Bin Laden's attacks on the two U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam, for which he claimed responsibility, as he also did for for the poll. Um, and and there's been another uh, some other attacks. Nobody said anything about Al Qaeda, and but Al Qaeda was not a myth. That was a real organization, and and this is why. And this is why people have such strong feelings, because and I'm being told. That my time is up. Is that how much time have I got, Tim? You're Zero. out of time. Okay, I'm out of time. Well, possibly like the rest of America. So I will yield the microphone to our speaker, Ted Aranda. Yay! <laughs> All right, Ted, you get the last word. <laughs> Thank you.
Or get it, get it, get it from whoever took it. Anyway, um, who has the power cord for this computer? Oh yeah, wait, no. Yeah, somebody, whoever disconnected, whoever disconnected this computer, uh, took the power cord. Uh, so just find that person, and they have, they must have the power cord. They, did, they didn't know it was Bob's computer and his power cord. <clears throat> Try Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, did you take the power cord with the computer? That's actually uh, goes with the computer. Thanks. Sorry. Okay, let's let's okay. get, get yeah. back on task. Okay, there's so much here. Um, I have uh, a lot of answers for most of your questions and issues, uh, and it's sitting at home because uh, I, it was so much material, and I had a limited amount of time. If I had another hour, or even two more hours, I could have gone into all of that. So I started with the basics, the things that you would think uh, intelligent, logical, reasonable people who are not on some crazy substance would understand. Okay. That's, you have to start with, I think you have to start with science. When people tell you, uh, okay, you know, uh, see that elephant across the street? And you say, no, I don't see an elephant. And you go over there and you don't see an elephant. And they insist, you know, there's an elephant across the street. You know, you can't deal with that. So you have to, you have to deal with the, the most basic fundamental things. These, you know, next thing you know, they'll, they'll, they'll tell us that uh, uh, you can fly, fly a plane th through the base of Mount Everest and come out the other side. Well, if that's not possible, it's not possible. And, and if people are telling you that, then you know they're lying, and you know they have another agenda. Yeah, you're going to have to get me another court. Bob. No, Bob. We'll, get, we'll, we'll find Where that court. It? We'll find that court. Where? Wait, wait, Bob. Let, let Ted finish his, his speech, and, and, and then we can deal with that. Okay? It's got, it's just disappeared into thin air. Okay, who, uh, who, who took apart uh, the computer? Charlie. Okay, Charlie. Where's Charlie? What? Let's find Charlie. Let's, Charlie. There's Charlie over there. Bob, that's Charlie. Charlie did it. Charlie? It vaporized in a cloud of dust. Okay. Thanks, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, okay, we'll find that. Okay, so let me just uh, try to get to a couple things. Uh, first of all, Al-Qaeda and, um, and Osama bin Laden. These are uh, uh, CIA-created, they are organizations. They're CIA-created organizations. Okay, they were literally on the payroll of, of, of the United States. Um, there's a, an American embassy in, um, in Jeddah, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the guy that used to uh, run the embassy, who was trying to be honest, he, he, he left, okay, uh, he said he called it a terrorist recruiting center for the CIA, okay, the guy who ran it. It didn't Thanks, Bob. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, and thanks, Bob, for the use of his computer. Um, so you, uh, there, are, there, are, you can explain a lot of these phenomena, these these micro phenomena of of 9/11 of if you look into it. Um, and I would, if I had enough time, I could get to a lot of them. Um, but there are some things that you don't know. Okay, if somebody has to explain every aspect and every detail of an operation to uh, claim that they understood what happened, you would never have a conviction of any criminal in this country. Okay, because, you know, uh, oh, well, you know, I, somebody gave me some uh, weird uh, drink, that's why I shot my girlfriend, okay? You don't know, necessarily know, for a fact, what was in the guy's drink. It's, you know, it's, it's long gone. Okay, so you don't necessarily uh, know everything. You have to take a preponderance of evidence. And that's the way you build a criminal case. How much time do I have, Tim? We, 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 we're over now. Okay. So let me uh, finish uh, by saying that what we have is rulers ruling us, okay? Not us ruling ourselves. And uh, unless and until we understand that, we are screwed. Check out my website, democracyfortheusa.org. Our rulers have a world domination project. Uh, explained in PNAC, PNAC's uh, 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 document, Building uh, uh, America's Defenses. Okay. I could go on, but thanks a lot, everybody. Yay! I appreciate it.